and welcome to Learn from the Experts, sponsored by WBOA. And today, I'm very excited to have Colleen Campbell. Hello, Colleen. Hi, how, how are, are you? Good, how are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. Good, how about if you tell me the name of your organization? We have Heroes, Horses, and Hounds, which is a nonprofit. And our mission is to rescue unwanted horses and dogs and retrain them for service and animal assisted programs. Wow. And then That's to be placed with a person in need. Yeah. That's great. That's really great. And, you know, back in the day, you might have seen dogs that were um, for the blind, say mm -hmm. a ser service dog like that. And then yeah. you kind of heard of dogs maybe for epilepsy to warn somebody. I know I've heard of that. Yeah. But more and more lately, I've been seeing dogs in grocery stores or things like that. And it's kind of an up and coming thing. And I've been reading about all the things that dogs can do and help with and assist with. So first of all, I just thought maybe is there a different way to treat a service dog if you were to see one in a grocery store, say? There is. Um, service dogs need to be focused 100% on the person they're with. So that means that anybody else needs to completely ignore that the dog is there. No talking, no eye contact, no petting especially, um, because any of those sort of things takes the dog's focus away from their person. And if their person needs them, they might miss the cue and the person might have a panic attack or um, you know might have some sort of a seizure if they're epileptic or something a little bit worse it sure. can be dangerous yeah and it's it's hard because they're cute a lot they are but it's just something you really have to remember just leave a service dog alone yes and so what what kind of things can a dog do so something maybe mainstream public doesn't know yeah so we work a lot with the PTSD service dogs. Wow. Um, we're working with veterans and the dogs are very instrumental in keeping them relaxed and keeping their anxiety levels down. Um, so some of the tasks that the dogs learn um, would be to lean. So they lean their body weight against your leg, which is a very grounding type of movement and it helps people refocus to the dog rather than whatever was worrying them out and around. Um, they're also taught to nudge. A lot of times when people start to disassociate or get nervous, they ball their fists. Mm -hmm. So the dogs are taught to nudge their hand and lick to bring them again back to where they are. Um, with the PTSD dogs, we also teach them to walk behind the person. So if they're in a crowded area, nobody can sneak up behind them and touch them on shoulder, which is very triggering for a lot of veterans. Um, they're also taught to sweep a room. So if they have an issue going into a darkened room when they're all alone, the dog can be taught to go behind all of the furniture and turn lights on and wow. then come back and sit to signal that the room is clear and it's safe to go in. That's amazing. So, yeah. And then they can also be taught to do a lot of the other normal tasks that you see with um, people with disabilities, picking things up, opening doors and helping with those sort of things. So I don't know if the camera is picking up that we have a little service dog in training. And so who is, who do we have today? This is Lily. Um, Lily is in the very beginning stages of training. So she is learning a lot about public access and how to ignore everything else in her environment. Um, Lily here is training for third party service, which is... She's going to train all of the tasks as a service dog, but she'll be able to work with social workers and classrooms and um, therapists who have people that might need a service dog at a moment, but don't need a service dog all the time. So she can help with kids with autism in the classroom or kids going through really traumatic experiences for social work, um, dealing oh, okay. with training. So she won't, so she won't so much be being with one person, mm -hmm. she can be learn to be with multiple multiple yeah. people. So she'll have a handler and the handler will actually send her to okay. do a task. Oh. So she'll learn to go nudge or go lean. So she'll go to one specific person that's in need at the moment. Wow. Yep. That's great. And I've even heard of pets finding, say, cancer on their, mm -hmm. you know, on their thing. So dogs can be so much more, I don't know, perceptive and yeah. helpful than we can even imagine. Now, what about the horses? So the horses, um, we do two programs with the horses. We have full-size horses that we'll rescue, and we have programs worked out where the people learn how to gain their trust and restart them, and then we'll place them either in other therapeutic programs or with families in need of a safe riding horse. Um, and then we have the miniature horses, which are now being 
um, used as service animals anywhere a dog is. So we're now wow. starting to train our miniatures for service as well. So how, and like when you say miniature... They're uh, about the size of a large golden retriever. Really? So they are, yeah, they tend to be just over knee height and they work really well with um, mobility service. They've been used for diabetes. They've been used for seeing eye horses for uh, uh, about 50 years now for that. Really? Yes. Wow, so. <laughs> that's amazing. I didn't yeah. even know that. Yep. So um, I heard a rumor that horses could be house trained to go like go to the bathroom yes. outside. <laughs> yep, the miniatures really? can. The miniatures go less frequently, so they can hold it for about four hours and you can train them to be in your house and tell you when they need to go out. Amazing. And, uh, yeah. That's yeah. a great stuff. Now, where's your place located? We are foster based. So we are all over the Western Mass area at the moment. Um, we have fosters that take in dogs and help us train them for the time that they're needed. So we are working on raising money so that we can get our own farm, uh, hopefully by the fall, and be based in one area. But until then, we're mobile. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. you do a lot of fundraising, like events, we do. sir? Yes. Um, we have one event coming up on February 18th, which is a gala. We have dinner and dancing, and um, we have ticket sales for that, which they can find on our website. We also have other events planned for um, the spring and summer. We have some um, dog-friendly beer festivals in the works, and we also have a trail ride, competitive trail ride for horses, and then dog oh, wow. washes and all sorts of other fun things. Oh, fun. Yeah. That is definitely fun. Now, say somebody wanted to be work with you, like, say, as a foster to be trained. you have a mm -hmm. training program? Mm -hmm. Yep, we do. It's um, The fosters need to be able to commit to at least 200 hours of public access, bringing the dog out to stores and restaurants and things, um, and also able to commit to a weekly class with our service dog trainer, Jessica Matson. Um, and Jess will teach them the tasks that they're going to work on for the week. They go home, they work on those tasks, and then the next week they get the next step. Wow. So it is a lot of training. It's a big commitment, but mm -hmm. it's very worthwhile. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, well, first I just want to say thank you because I really, especially, you know, hear veterans coming home and not only that, but people with disabilities. I think mm -hmm. this is just such a great resource. So you're doing a great thing. Okay. So first of all, thank you for that. And so we have about a minute left. Is there something I didn't touch on that you'd like the public to know? Um, there is a thought that only dogs that are bred for service and only specific breeds are able to do it. And it's really not. It's a personality trait. It's oh, a okay. dog that's very focused on their person and very um, people-oriented that has the trainability for a service animal. So when we're rescuing dogs, we evaluate them for a personality, not for a breed type, which is why, um, you know, certain dogs do better at certain things. And Lily has a little bit of beagle, so she would be great for, like, a seizure detection dog or a diabetes de detection dog, whereas even pit bulls are wonderful with PTSD because they're very... Um, they love the touch of the person. They mm -hmm. love to be on top of their person. So they work really well in that regard. Wow. So yeah. That's great. Well, thank you. And I think that there's a lot of ways that people could get involved or help mm -hmm. you or whatever. So tell me your name and your uh, website, the name of your business. Which... Yeah. So we are Heroes Horses and Hounds. Um, our website is www.heroeshh.org. We also have a very active Facebook page that we post updates on the animals and events coming up, um, which is Heroes, Horses, and Hounds on Facebook. Thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That's it for today. And I've learned a ton, and I hope you've learned something as well, and maybe you want to get involved. And if you want to hear any more about Colleen, you can also go on WBOA.org and check out our member organization. Thank you. Yes, our member directory, I'm sorry. Thank you so much.